Hello, and welcome back to Parlay. This one was paid for by True Mr. Foot. If you're not them, I hope you'll enjoy listening. Mr. Foot writes, Hello to everyone listening to this, and welcome back to Parlay. This month, we will talk about recommendations. Why do we recommend media? What reasons do we have for doing so? Is there a difference in recommendations from reviewers and people in our personal life? And why do we like to ignore <laughs> recommendations so much? As usual, we have some of my thoughts to help you answer these questions. I recommend tackling these prompts one after the other. Everything I talk about from here on is my opinion. I don't want to mention it every paragraph, so here's your disclaimer. Yeah, of course, and as usual, I'll try to keep the, the text subtitle up when it's Mr. Foot's writing and not my thoughts. Great, so we've got three basically spoilered out chunks, and as you've asked, I'll tackle them in order and we'll, we'll see what we get. Cool. Many people recommend media hoping they will get a conversation topic out of that. This can work out, but it can also be problematic. I recommend Warframe because I like Warframe, and we will have something in common if you like Warframe as well. This is usually a bad reason to recommend something. I have also recommended slash forced Zandi to play things in the past for the purpose of creating Parlay. The Beginner's Guide and How Fish is Made are games that are worth talking about, and I thought that Zandi would have interesting things to add to my understanding of both games. Whether Zandi actually liked them or not was never a requirement for the discussion to happen. Another thing that helped to make the recommendation easier is the very low barrier to entry for both games. The Beginner's Guide is $10 with a total playtime of less than 2 hours, and How Fish is Made is free with a total playtime of 15 minutes. I'll pause here. Yes, um, I think this is a great way to start the parlay. Uh, indeed, I think that the the components of good recommending to get them on the table are already you've drawn a lot of them out. The motivation uh, should be a sensible one, a realistic one. We'll get to that in just a sec. It's got to have a, a good enough barrier to entry. The person has to like be physically able re within reason to consume the recommendation. And... Uh, there should be, if you're recommending the thing uh, <laughs> selfishly, I guess, um, there has to be a good reason to recommend it to this person. I think that's a big one. So I'll go more in depth on one and three. Um, first of all, the first thing, the motivation behind the recommendation. If you want discussion out of the thing, you are recommending something, Warframe in Mr. Foot's example, because you like it and you want to talk with someone who likes it but weirdly you're not recommending the thing because you think the other person will like it which is what you want you want them to like it but you're not recommending it because you think they'll like it you're recommending it because you want them to like it not because you think they really will your main thought is it sure would be good if you did like this not here are some reasons why you probably will like it you know which I agree doesn't really make sense. Um, it's not a sin, it is probably the most common form of recommending, but it is ineffectual. I would recommend trying not to do this. People have limited time, there's an avalanche of media out there, and it is powerful to achieve a position where your recommendations are frequently taken seriously. That's going to be a theme I'll come back to. Achieving a position where people understand that you do not recommend things lightly is a very, very advantageous position to be in, because when you can get the most out of it, and you really do think that the other person will like it, if you cultivate this, you will be taken seriously and you will get your discussion. If people don't constantly recommend, you know, games to me, for example, over the years, my list has grown smaller and I actually play the games that you all recommend, right? Now that they've been consistently relevant, I even more often take those recommendations, right? It's getting to the point where the Friday streams are more or less just you and I talking about stuff. I mean, not specifically Mr. Food, but all of you collectively, um, and often playing games that you all have recommended, which is awesome. That that's a great feeling. It's it's a good feeling to be close to people who are in that position as well. But overall for this parlay, your carrot to encourage you to give better recommendations is that there are many benefits to being able to give good recommendations. Being able to word why you recommend something is, is valuable, powerful, totally achievable. 
Uh, so we'll try to pursue that a little during this parlay. I think the reason why I'm going to try to answer the questions at the beginning throughout the parlay. I think the reason why a re recommendations are ignored so much is very simply because they're usually bad. <laughs> they're just bad. Most times people recommend things, they're like not even really trying. They're just sort of saying, I like this. You know, they're not, they, and people know that. People are used to that type of recommendation. And so people know you're just saying you enjoyed this. That's really basically no reason at all for me to enjoy it. I once heard this little clip that has confused me for all time, where it was this famous person and they said, it doesn't matter why you like something, it only matters what you like, which could not possibly be more wrong. Like that could not be more incorrect. Uh, if you have real meaningful relationships with other people, then it doesn't matter what you like, it matters why you like it. An intelligent, mature person should be able to enjoy and appreciate discussion about a thing that has the, 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 the essence of a thing they enjoy. And it won't be necessary for the thing to be superficially like something that they know about. If you want to associate with other humans as quickly as possible, in the most meaningless way you possibly can, yeah, I guess what you like is what's important for doing that. But that is, a, it's not worth your time to do that. <laughs> don't bother. Or it's so easy, you will anyway. You don't even have to try. It's so worthless and so easy that you can just do it without even, go to, you know, a club or a store that you like, and you have essentially already done that. You don't need to try any more than living your daily life, or at most taking like a a class in your spare time, which I'm not saying is a bad thing to do, just that that is, that is like the starting line of human connections. <laughs> that is not how you form meaningful human connections. I don't know what, I feel bad for that person who I'm quoting, but I don't know who it is. They, they surely meant something else. That's just a ridiculous claim, but no, they probably didn't. It was a, some, some schmuck. <laughs> So anyway, to summarize this uh, section, I strongly feel that it, uh, yes, I agree, Mr. Fu, the recommendations that come from wanting to discuss the thing um, and having something in common are, are the worst form, by far the most common, and that is why recommendations are usually so weak. To the extent that you do not recommend things that way and have the discipline to really think about the other person and understand that if what you want is discussion, you need to figure out if they will like it because you, what you want is for them to like it. Recommending it to them because you want them to like it isn't the same as recommending it to them because you think they will like it and you want them to like it. But it is it takes discipline to remember that step and not get greedy and think, oh, it would be so easy to just tell myself they'll like it and then make them sit through it. And most people will from time to time, that's kind of the bad part of this. You're gonna impose something on people that is a needlessly mediocre experience compared to what you could have done. It is the love song you should give to the people in your life to give them good recommendations. It is a great feeling to consume only the most amazing things together. And you will, right? Because if you only recommend things that are the cream of your crop of experience, but also that you think they will really like, it's probably going to only be really good things, which is fantastic. Why spend the time with these dear people to you any other way? Anyway, enough evangelizing. The next bit. Zandi, Mr. Fruit continues, is in an unusual position of talking about build craft related games with the eventual goal of reviewing build systems in games. I also recommend games that might either have interesting or unique build systems, or are an interesting point of contrast for other games. 20 Minutes Till Dawn is a game that includes an upgrade system that's pretty much identical to Nova Drift, uh, and, and an out-of-session progression that is very similar to The Mirror of Night from Hades, which are two games that we talk about a lot. I feel there's some value to be had in comparing these games, and seeing how these systems differ, where one game might fail, where the other one might succeed. For example, The Mirror equivalent in 20 Minutes has some very poorly balanced options on the defense side, which devalues the whole system. I mostly agree, but let's just put that aside for now. We could have a discussion that I'm sure would be interesting about that, but let's just, there's a lot in this parlay, so let's just keep going. Sure, I agree. I Something I think will 
just briefly focus on for this little segment is that I am the exception. Recommending things to me isn't probably how you should recommend them to most people because, and it feels a little weird to like brag about this about myself, one of my strengths and merits as an entertainer for you all is that I am good, much better than most people, at appreciating things that I don't like, that I just feel like are of value in some intellectual way, that you can learn from, be inspired by, understand yourself better through, that have a long-term benefit, but are not short-term like the best or ideal experience. I focus on that much more than the average person, so being able to enjoy a recommendation that is focused that way is uncommon. Indeed, for me, you may be able to recommend things that you just enjoy and hope somebody will talk about with you, and I'll probably be able to find some of the thing in there, you know, because that is my job. I'm, I, I'm a professional in basically only that field. I do think that it's important to be able to do that. I think that you can't really design truly good games unless you do that. If you are a prisoner of your own perspective, you will not design a good game experience. You might make a good piece of art, but if other people have to do it instead of just see it or witness it, you need to be rid of the limits of your own perspective to do a good job with that. I think this is why many very popular, very heavily produced games that are nevertheless not made by anybody of, of genuine game design chops are beautiful frequently, almost always, but they aren't actually very good experiences. Like a lot of the game parts of the game are what are weakest about it. Independently made games, made by individuals, therefore if that individual is good at this thing I'm describing, then the whole game will be like that because there's almost no one else working on it, are frequently the opposite. They're strongest in that category. From a game perspective, they're the strongest because the one or three people making it played a ton of it, and it's only those people who made any decision, so of course they made it have good quality of life their interpretations of what would be better didn't go through anyone, so the game was focused on that stuff, which I think it should be. I think it's the by far better trade. Because you can experience the things that are good about the, the, the big popular AAA games through other media. I've talked in previous parlay about how you might want that specific mix of things, and this is a great way to recommend things too, to think about what the person you're recommending to wants as like a mix in their entertainment. How dense do they want it? How much interaction do they want, etc. But overall, my point is simply that it is uh, d dangerous, a, a difficult thing to recommend something to someone with the intent that they don't care how they feel about it, but just have like intellectual things to say about it. It's not a graduate class in, in literature discourse, you know? Well, unless it is. <laughs> I, but anyway, um, my, I, I, yes, it's important to be careful of that, to acknowledge that there's a very different context to recommending something to me than to the other people. I am very, very happy, a little flattered, that you all really do treat me differently than you would treat just any other creator. I, I think I've earned it. I, you should, but loads of people should be treated differently. Like you're, you're doing it. Um, that means a lot to me. We'll continue. Mr. Foot says in my private life. Ooh, okay. I rarely recommend things to talk about them. My thought process is usually that this piece of art provides a certain unique experience a friend might appreciate. My mental recommendation score I depend on has four factors. Quality, in this case, execution, uniqueness, relevance to the person receiving the recommendation, and time investment. But sometimes it's more complex than that. This is where we arrive at the inspiration for this month's parlay. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna briefly pause here because I want to go through the the criteria. Uh, quality, uniqueness, relevance, and time investment. So quality, I, let's say execution. Actually, I think that's good. So. Uh, why Mr. Foot would recommend something to you is dependent on how unique it is. That's fairly simple. How different it is from all the other things. Do you need to do this one, or could you just watch any anime, for example? 
I would agree that that, is, that one is almost universally good. It's, it's hard to argue that if something is less unique, you should more recommend it. That mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Unique things might not always be what someone wants, but they, they definitely merit being pointed out more than things that are the same as other things, because that is what uniqueness means. <laughs> um, it's either not worth recommending anything to that person, or it would be worth recommending the things that are different, because recommending things that are the same would, you know, um, that's not completely worthless. Maybe they want more of the same, sure. But they're often easy to find. They're usually easy to find. So I agree about uniqueness. That's a that's a strong criteria. Time investment, unnecessary criteria. Relevance to the person receiving the recommendation. Well, that's challenging, but we've talked about it a little bit. Um, these the word cloud of things like do they have the perspective that I am appreciating the thing from? Therefore, would they maybe see the things in it I saw? Do they have a different perspective about it that I have on good authority would cause them to enjoy it, but isn't the perspective I have, therefore I could enjoy that? Are they a professional at not needing to enjoy the thing to appreciate it, etc.? I don't want to talk myself up too much there, but I mean, this is what we have. <laughs> um, and then execution. Um, is it good? Uh, I would argue this one is the least important. Um, I worry that when recommending things, it's more important than it normally is, the quality of the product, because it might put off someone who doesn't really know what they're going into. Something I think about a ton is what sells people on being motivated to do a thing, because I am most frustrated by the people around me just not apparently being able to be motivated by anything. Something being a good promise of value seems to mean almost nothing to the people around me, and that frustrates me a lot. It's so easy to improve uh, not a lot of parts of your life, but some of them. And people just aren't motivated because it isn't improvement now. It's only improvement later, I guess. When you start consuming a new piece of media, well, I guess it's exciting now. But the payoff is meant to be a little later. And so why are people motivated to start? If we could understand that, we could motivate them to start other things, which would be helpful because it's, it's most people's problem is they won't be motivated to do a thing that would obviously be good. Uh, and so I think that, yeah, execution is important in the sense that it makes the experience sleek out of the gate, maybe. In a way, my point is that it kind of doesn't need to be if you have some exterior motivation to consume the thing. Mr. Foot will give an example of one of those in just a moment. But yeah, I thought those criteria were interesting and that they were worth a few minutes to talk about. Mr. Foot says, this is where we arrive at the inspiration for this month's parlay. I finished a visual novel called The House in Fata Morgana earlier this year. I bought it purely based on the fact that it was the single best reviewed Switch game on Metacritic for a, review, uh, for a while with a perfect score of 100. I usually don't care about scores, but if eight separate reviewers gave a game I've never heard about a perfect score, then the game had to do something right. I have never played a visual novel before, and I like to try new things, knowing I'll probably dislike them. However, I really enjoyed The House in Fata Morgana, and immediately after finishing it, I thought, well, this was great, but if you're not me, then this is pretty much impossible to recommend. There are six main reasons. Okay, number one, all you do is read. Reading can be exhausting. Number two, I read at an average speed, and it took me 32 hours to finish the game. Number three, the pacing is slow. <laughs> Number four, the game is good, but it only gets exceptionally good after 10 plus hours. Number five, explaining the exceptionally good things is impossible without spoilers, which would defeat the purpose of playing. And number six, it does some things with the medium of the visual novel, which make it impossible to get the same experience when you retell it. Now, you might say something like, this just sounds like a bad, optimized, lazy piece of media. To which I reply, fair enough, but this is not a question about quality. Long story short, it just feels impossible to recommend in any way other than, trust me, bro, and that one never works. Is there an approach that might actually work here? Keeping in mind that there is a, a remaining chunk to the parlay, uh, we, we will try. We'll spend some time giving it a go. Because these were spoilered out, I didn't prepare for this part, of course. So I'm going to take a moment to think about what the best way, given the time we have, to address that topic might be. Basically, Mr. Foot is 
uh, describing a situation where they they consumed something for what were initially fairly external or personal reasons you know they felt like giving a try something with a perfect score from a bunch of different reviewers in a medium they haven't played before by the way i think that's a big factor you hadn't played a visual novel before and so you feel like that combined with the way you enjoyed the piece means it is quite specific to you like why you appeared to enjoy it so it's difficult to uh pitch to other people like i was mentioning a minute ago i think it's key to indeed to think about what the impetus to you playing the thing was and for you one of the problems is that the reason you decided to try it doesn't really have that much to do with the game itself as much as it's framing uh and you are also a person you say who who likes to try new things knowing you'll probably dislike them which as somebody who does that all the time as well it's frustrating i don't really understand why i do that but i definitely do enjoy it i'm just getting enjoyment from something other than the thing itself it's the process that i'm really enjoying and i don't know how to recommend that you know i feel like if people i haven't unlocked that on the tech tree if it if it will be considered an unlock which i think it is but i don't know then they just automatically won't like the thing you know <laughs> i'm kind of recommending the thing to people not only because I, not, not because I think they'll enjoy it, but because I think they won't enjoy it, you know, like, but I think that's good, which is weird. So I definitely understand that problem. And then you feel like, well, you enjoyed it, but there were so many, the, the, the way you enjoyed it is the thing that seems hard to recommend on paper. It just doesn't really work. That's, that's how you're feeling. And the reasons are, um, kind of summarized in two categories. It's long and slow paced, and you don't feel that you can pitch anything about it because it is quite specific to its medium, and the, the, the kind of things you would pitch are also big spoilers. So is there an approach that might actually work? Well, one thing I want to note is that I think when you recommend something, you are giving that media a little bit of help if the recommendation is good. This is where I said before at the beginning of the parlay that if you cultivate a relationship with someone where they believe your recommendations are with them in mind and you don't recommend things lightly, you have the power to recommend things like this that on paper seem like why would they consume this and yet they might give it a try if you're dying on the hill of that thing, right? Which you just might not be, by the way. It might be that you think, well, this is unrecommendable because it's just not good enough to die on the hill of. Sure. But you see what I mean. That type of push is basically exactly what you need. A lot of works that I've really enjoyed, people will react like it's 148 episodes. I'm not watching the 2011 remake of Hunter x Hunter, for example. And yet when I've, I've only recommended that to two people in my life and they both loved it, but it was very difficult to get them to start watching it. They didn't like it only at the end. They were way into it quite early. Like it was definitely a good recommendation for them. But indeed, nothing about the piece of media really helped me, <laughs> except that it is good, like when you get into it. Um, the reason they, they tried it was because I worked hard to cultivate some recommendation clout outside of that piece of media. So one thing I'd like to suggest is that you could look at this the other way you are actually the only recommendable thing about this piece of media. You are this piece of media's chance to get recommended to people. Um, this type of story is often a cult classic in the sense that not a lot of people read it, but the people that do get really into it, often they get pretty invested in using a lot of energy recommending it to other people, <laughs> but they don't have you know much momentum recommending stuff. So without going on too long, um, yeah, I, I think these are big issues. I wanted to point out that a lot of them could be considered positive. It being long isn't bad if the person is the type of person to pace themselves and break it up. It being reading isn't bad if the person would consider that contrast. If you can adequately enough break down what you enjoyed about it, yeah, you could see if other people match. And I think that broadly, if a piece of media seemed good to the person who made it and you, you're not the same, probably. So I'm sure there's enough room in there that other people would enjoy it, of course. 
and would would be reckoned other people consumed it you know um and surely those people are closer to you than average your people in your personal life in your your inner circle are not picking at random from the population they're more likely to be people who would enjoy this thing even if they're not they're definitely more likely to be so you have a decent chance and it's also quite possible that there are things about it that you didn't like that that are merits of the piece of media, of course. That one's obvious. I mean, I don't mean to talk down to you. Just to say that I would be a little more optimistic, I guess I would say, um, provided you really do think it's worth the recommendation, which by the fact that you literally paid me $9 and listened to me spend a half hour talking about this subject uh, to explore, you evidently have thought about this enough that I bet you will take the recommendation process seriously. If you really think it's good, I would be a little more optimistic that this could be a recommendable thing. Now, we're not going to go on too long about this point, but I did want to highlight, you said the game is good, but it only gets exceptionally good after 10 plus hours. We've, you've done a parlay specifically before about things getting good later. I do want to suggest, like I said, there, there could be things about it that would get good for people earlier, sure. At the same time, I think that's the biggest one. It's very difficult to, to know what that period of time is. I often find myself misremembering that point. So if, as a point of criticism, uh, I d have no idea for, for this game, but I have often found that when I am worried about that point, I'm, I'm quite off on like when exactly it felt like it got good. Um, I think there's two factors here we really don't have time to fully explore, but I wanted to mention because I know it's a topic of interest to you. The first one is that, uh, you know, the experience is I, I often play things like in a big chunk. That makes my ability to remember what point I thought a thing got good at a, a little fuzzy. You know, if I watch a bunch of uh, episodes of a show all at once, it's hard to remember what was what episode. I often watch back and think this happens that early. It's often that they happened earlier than I thought. But two, I also think it has to do with things getting good. The nature of things getting good is more gradual than it often feels. It feels like, what's the turning point? But with the contrast of the less good parts and the relative amount of time you've spent consuming the thing and, you know, the things the story is planting that are little mysteries that are now resolved in our heads because we've consumed this thing. I think that things often feel like they're getting good a lot earlier than we remember when we consume media like that. I, I don't know. Like, I, there's definitely exceptions. Uh, I just thought it was a worthwhile thing to suggest that maybe it's not that bad. Um, do you have any specific recommendations uh, besides just saying waiting for the right time and, and taking it seriously and not recommending that many things? You might need to wait a while. You might just need to wait a long time to recommend the thing. Um, no, I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I guess the only, the, and the biggest thing for all recommendations is if somebody asks for a recommendation, you can recommend something that's a tougher sell and they, they're looking for something, you know? So you have, you have some momentum there. So I do think that that's, um, you more or less, you just need to wait either to have some, some recommendation clout for not recommending a bunch of things and or to for them to need a recommendation more if you think this is an unusually challenging recommendation. That being said, it is very difficult to have all the perspectives someone could have, and it's possible that a lot of the things that you say make it hard to recommend are actually things that would make it easier to recommend to the right person at the right time. Not all of them, but anyway. Concluding the parlay, Mr. Fruit says one more point before we close. I might be a hypocrite. I rarely follow any recommendations from anyone, and that's because I specifically look for new experiences when I choose my media, regardless of whether I think I will enjoy them or not. Paradoxically, this approach leads to more enjoyment in the long term. This is where we run into an issue. The recommendations I receive are based on what other people enjoy or want to talk about, and things that I've enjoyed in the past. It doesn't help that they're really bad at explaining why I would get something I care about out of my experience. There's this symmetric dynamic here where the person that is recommending knows about the quality, uniqueness, and time investment, but is guessing in terms of relevance, going back to Mr. Fruit's four criteria. 
the person receiving the recommendation is very wary of the time investment and they don't really care about quality and uniqueness as much as they think they do. They also really care about the relevance and they assume they can assess it even though they can't until they actually consume the thing. Should I give people the benefit and should I expect them to give me better reasons for their recommendations? The benefit of the doubt, I assume you meant. Um, yes, this is, this is tricky, so a good way to end the parlay. Um, I said before at the beginning, I think the, basically why people give bad recommendations is this um, lack of this asymmetry in the dynamic that I would agree with. I would construct it a little differently than you did. I said it earlier, basically that their motivation isn't the motivation that would lead them to fulfill their motivation. <laughs> they want someone to like the thing. But to get that, they need to recommend things not motivated by wanting someone to like the thing. They need to recommend things motivated by the person being likely to like the thing. <laughs> um, and that that's hard. Um, that also seems pointless if you don't want them to like the thing. Anyway. So, um, yeah, so, so what's the solution? Now, I agree. I've definitely had this problem as well. I think that for the most part... People either uh, don't think this is a problem at all, probably because they like things more similar to what they've liked, and it's extremely easy to recommend things similar to things you've liked in the past, or they think recommendations are basically pointless and hardly ever get any good recommendations because they do not want things similar to things they've had in the past. As you say, the people recommending stuff to us, I'm definitely in the same boat here. I, I, I would have said all of this verbatim if you didn't say it. Um, the people recommending things to us only have our past experiences as input, but we want exactly not that. <laughs> and so it's not, mm. now I myself am a good example of one weird solution, which is that kind of the solution to a lot of social problems is that if you can get the person to understand the, the kind of root of your desire for, for that type of media, they may be able to adequately simulate it. For example, because the people in my life know I have so many things on my plate and so many different recommendations already coming at me from honestly people better equipped to give them, all of you, even my friends in my personal life are, I think, less likely to give me good recommendations than you do. They don't listen to me talk about this subject for as long as you do. No one does. No offense. That's great. I'm flattered. Um, and it really is very helpful. But they've learned that. And so, my friends being the very smart people that they are, they tend to recommend me things that they've realized that needs to be things that they didn't know what to do with, or they didn't know what to think about. They consume a thing and they think, what, what is this? Like, wh what? <laughs> and they recommend it to me because they know that experience is the closest thing they have to what I want. They might not understand exactly what it is I want experientially, but they've kind of triangulated that when they feel like that, that's when it would be something I would enjoy. And because we've you know been close and recommending stuff and playing things together for so long, and because I never shut up about game design, for example, my friends have relatively infinite, intimate knowledge of what would annoy me actually kind of more than what I like because I'm not really even looking for this the thing I like. There is no thing I like. There's no genre of game. I don't even like genres of games as a concept, let alone a, a genre of game, right? Um, that whole thing. There's no art style or like developer or publisher that I just like. I don't just like anything insufferable git that I am. Uh, and so they've learned that if they focus on avoiding things that they know I hate <laughs> and uh, and then recommend things that are just odd to them, that works better. I believe that you should expect people in your life to give you better reasons for the recommendations. It's just reasonable in this day and age to understand that people don't have the time. But I also think that you should consider doing some work to suggest what is a good way to recommend things to you. I personally feel that this is worth some significant effort. As you say, in the long run, it's more enjoyable. I made this career not entirely unmotivated by getting good recommendations. I just felt like I was never going to get any good recommendations from anyone ever. 
and I would always just be alone enjoying stuff by myself, taking completely blind shots in the dark to find things, unless people understand where I'm coming from. And my friends, that's one thing, but maybe a few more people, the game industry understanding a little, maybe, where I'm coming from, it would be nice, and, and so I tried. I, I structured my career basically to achieve that goal. One of the goals of discussing uh, build systems in game design is that I think the biggest reason they're bad, usually, is that developers don't understand what people who are enjoying that want. There isn't very good language for what those people are enjoying, specifically. I don't think it's because they're motivated by some weird corporate greed. I think it's complicated and they just don't know like what we want. We're not saying what we want, after all. Um, so I, I honestly think that it's better to take it in good faith and say, yeah, I need to help. I, the people need more information. <laughs> um, so for sure, I think, um, I think people giving better recommendations is good. Uh, I, I think your friends would hopefully be amenable to you saying, hey, I want to give you better recommendations. What are the best things I've recommended to you? What's the thing you've enjoyed the most, you can ask them, that I recommended to you? Hopefully they will. this will begin a discussion about how you feel about what you've recommended to them. And you might say, you know, I want better recommendations because I just don't have enough time for things. And when you're interested in something, I'm interested in it, but I just don't know like I don't have the time for all these things. Uh, I want to be able to kind of share things in a more targeted way with you, my friend. Your partner is a great person to do this with, uh, partners if you have them. Um, and I think people would be amenable to that. Um, I think for a lot of people it might there might be no higher purpose to them. They might not, like I'm going to say you, Mr. Voot, and I certainly, they might not be obsessed with this topic the way I definitely am. But I think they'd still be amenable to discussing it a little bit. And if you say, you know, this this thing you recommended to me, probably something unexpected from their perspective, is the thing you recommended that I enjoyed the most, th that might help to encourage them to recommend a different kind of thing. Indeed, uh, I just think that people are hesitant to get to know the people close to them specifically enough. It's almost like people are afraid that if they uncover the details of the person underneath, they won't like them, or they'll discover there's some categorical disagreement between them. Oh wait, that is what people are afraid of, but you shouldn't live your life in fear of that. And I don't think Mr. Foot, this is a totally shot in the dark cold read, but I don't think Mr. Foot is the kind of person who does live like that. I have a feeling you probably can just trust the people close to you to like kind of be on the same page existentially. And I don't know how worthwhile it is to not be on the same page existentially. I think people really undervalue this. Again, I think the reason is that they don't have confidence in themselves at that base level and and other oh, and they don't have confidence in other people. So they're not going to go there, but you really should. Um, that's where all the good things about life lie is when you get to directly pursue, you know, these glorious goals, like getting nuance, getting variety, getting all the stuff in the world around you. If you don't think the world is just all bad, this is the pursuit of getting the good things. It's, I don't really feel it's possible to have thought about this subject and just disagree that it's good to try to get like the things that are interesting. So have some faith uh, that maybe people will will agree if you if you get in there. Um, I don't know, I'm basically just encouraging you. Is this actually that helpful? Let me read over what you wrote a little bit more. I don't think I'm going to have too much else. But yeah, I do think that the the disconnect is important, um, saying that you care more about, or, or what I'm exploring now is blank. You know what's a good note to leave on? I think probably the most actionable piece of advice for most people is that they need to be able to say what they want more specifically. Probably, m me included, most of us listening kind of don't know that in a way we could put into words in casual conversation. If I make a video about it and I get to spend three days walking in the woods by myself and recording at this setup, yeah, like I can make you a video about what I enjoy about games, duh, come on, like you could probably do that. Um, it's not that hard, I, but, but being able to do it 
casually, like n d no real effort, you can just easily explain that thing. You really own the concept of what you're interested in right now. You may not be interested in any set topic right now. You might need to become focused enough that you can say what it is that you're specifically looking for in games and then learn how to express that clearly to people in your life. And then, yes, absolutely, demand better recommendations. But I think people need help. That's basically all I'm trying to say. Um, I think that the, the root cause of this, and basically all of our, it's not just games, but recommendation woes uh, for media, is that people don't have great language for that. People don't really put the effort into describing what they like about the thing. And if people just don't have the time for that, yeah, okay, like, I don't know what to say. But I really think that pursuing a relationship in your life where you can have the time to talk about that stuff is amazing, the, the best, the good thing. Do, do that. <laughs> do, am I selling this good? Folks, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, if you want to get something like this, you can check details on that in the description. For now, I want to thank Mr. Foot for supporting this episode, and I'll talk to you all soon.